Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling around San Antonio, checking out restaurants that are in curbside takeout and to go, and some that are doing something a little different. And on today's show, I'm gonna be wearing an N95 mask, and as per CDC regulations, I had to shave. I didn't like it, but you gotta do what you gotta do to stay safe. We're gonna be traveling around though, showing off some good food. We're driving around San Antonio looking for some curbside grub. Because they're cutting it, freezing it, and putting it in the freezer. That's so smart. <laughs> and cakes, they can actually last a while, right? Yes, as long as you freeze it. We brought back in the last week 20 people. Wow. Some people are wanting schooners, but we can't send out the glass, but we will <laughs> pour it in a to-go cup for you if need be. People tend to be buying everything right now. There, there seems to be a unlimited budget for seafood. Joining us here is Alexia Nadler, Operations Manager over here at Nadler's, and thank you so much for having us out here today. I know it's a weird time of the world right now. It's, it's a lot of things going on, a lot of adjustments having to be made, especially by bakeries, delis, restaurants, things like that. So how has this experience been for y'all? What adjustments have you had to make? Well, we've had to make quite a bit of adjustments. Um, we're selling things we never sold before. Maybe it'll something we'll keep doing, I don't know. But business has slowed down, but we're still trucking. People are still wanting cakes. And has this impacted you to the point where you've had to do any kind of drastic you know, measures to keep the doors open? We've cut our hours, unfortunately, but at least the days are still there. And uh, we have cut, we haven't cut staffing, we've just reduced hours, yeah. But we've, we're making casseroles, we're doing um, some D, DIY kits for people to do at home for Easter, birthdays, just because. I think that'll be a lot of fun. So it's made us very creative in a very short amount of time. Y'all are a San Antonio staple. This bakery's been here for decades, providing San Antonio with all their events, everything. This is where you get your cake at. This is where you come for the birthday parties, right? What is that like now? I know people are still having birthday parties. In fact, my mother-in-law had a birthday party and this is where we came to get her cake. Yeah. So how is, what is that like? So are people still ordering the cakes from you? Are they still getting their favorites? It's really funny because people are ordering cakes bigger than what they need when before they only got exactly what they needed right because they're cutting it freezing it and putting it in the in the freezer That's so smart <laughs> and cakes they can actually last a while right? yes as long as you freeze it they're putting it in little servings and ziplocs and putting it in the freezer that's a teachable moment right there there you go get more cake than you need put it in a freezer bag and freeze it, you got cake later. That's a good idea. Yeah, a lot of people. I love that. Uh, you know, people are becoming very crafty right now. Yes. They're doing a lot of things, finding out a lot more stuff uh, to make things last longer, to extend the life, especially like cakes here. Talk to me about the deli. Are you guys still serving up the same menu? We're still serving up the same menu. We're able to keep that going. We're selling more things by the pound and in bulk. So I'm hoping this might be a little bit more of an eye opener to people. Um, we're on Facebook constantly updating and we've seen lots of new people come in. So we're really grateful for that and we're thinking it'll be a good turnaround once this is all over. Would you say this is possibly the biggest hurdle that you've had to be, like, come across since the bakery's been open, since yes, the place's been open? Yes, I have never experienced this and I've been through a lot with my parents and I don't ever remember this type of struggle. Wow. That says a lot. I mean, because like I said, you guys have been here for so long. You've seen a lot of different things. You've been through the, the recession in 2008. In 2008. And this is bigger than that. It's much bigger than that. I was scared in the very beginning thinking, um, would we be able to survive this? And though we are struggling, we're still here. So I'm hoping that we will be able to survive this and come out much stronger. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for having us out here. And of course, for inspiring other restaurant owners to keep trying, keep yes. pushing, to keep being there. I mean, it seems like it keeps extending, but as long as you, you keep pushing, there's an opportunity there's for you guys to keep the door open. There's gonna be an opportunity for everybody. Yeah, well, yes. thank you so much. Thank and of course, you, David. this is where you need to come out here in San Antonio. You're looking for those cakes, you're looking for those specialty bakery items, the deli sandwiches, and of course, the DIY kits for Easter celebrations, for everything else. You guys got the cookies, the cakes, all the delicious stuff. Yep. This is where you need to come to. Nadler's, yep. thank you so much. Thank you. I'll give you a foot. All right. <laughs> <laughs> With 
me right here is the man Drew Blake, and of course we're over here at Max and Louis to talk about the new program that you have established with HEB, where your meals are available inside of stores for customers to go inside, pick up, and bring home. We were just out here a couple months ago. It was a totally different climate. Now, you are not really a restaurant anymore. You were just explaining to me you're more of a to-go place, right? Texas Eats literally changed one of my items forever <laughs> on that last show, the French toast grilled cheese. Yeah. It has now become one of the most popular items on our entire menu because of that show. So now we're figuring out how to stay afloat. That's crazy. You know, it's nuts. We were crying the day um, a few weeks ago when I had to lay off 60 of my 75 employees. Wow. I mean, it was, it's, it's devastating. I refused to close. I was going to do everything I possibly could. I mean, my wife and I and, my, uh, and some of my key managers and things, we were cooking and serving and delivering and doing all this stuff so we could stay open. HEB came along. If we did this, what do you think? Would you be interested? And I said, of course, whatever we can do to help survive and to bring our employees back. I mean, that was HEB's real yeah. um, reasoning behind this whole thing was to save some independent restaurants and to get as many people, you know, working. We brought back in the last week, 20 people. Wow. 20 people are, back on, our, are back on That's our payroll. Huge. Yeah. I changed, you know, our payroll process for the last few weeks from every two weeks to every week so I can get the people who are furloughed, they got their money really quick. And then the, um, the current employees that aren't making, in some cases, as much as they would, we're paying them a little bit faster as best wow. we, as, best as um, we can. So because of HEB, the program that they've put in place now, you were able to hire back employees that yep. you let go. And you now pretty much able to, you, are you comfortable with saying that you're gonna be able to stay afloat now? Absolutely. Wow. And it, yeah. And that's because of HEB. It's be, HEB, I can't forget also Benny Keith. Um, Benny Keith, who supplies all our food and all of our paper goods and things, they've supplied us with a refrigerated trailer because we didn't have enough refrigeration to store everything that we're doing for, for this HEB project. We, they provided us with a van to help us to, you know, make the deliveries. Um, they've gone over and above, HEB over and above. You know, we've done everything that we can to make this work. That's awesome. Um, and the outreach from our guests and friends and the media and all this stuff in a positive, unbelievable way. You know, I mean, so people like, they don't lie, whatever it is, this is all about this is all about good and, and helping people make it, yeah. you know, make it through. Well, Drew, I'm so glad that you guys are able to be a part of this and to get it going and to provide San Antonio with some tasty meals inside their HEBs. Yeah. Give me some foot, man. You got some foot. There you go. Keep doing your Thank thing. You. Good luck to you guys. Good and you stay and, safe. Yeah, we're, we will. We're standing in a Benny Keith trailer. This trailer is a refrigerated trailer because we don't have enough refrigerator space in, this, in the restaurant. So they gave us this trailer to use for our refrigeration. They're helping us make our deliveries. We have a very unique relationship with Benny Keith. So everything in this, um, you know, that you're seeing in this truck are things that are on our menu that are really, really popular. The French toast, our grilled cheese, our, our spaghetti and meatballs, those things are still translating over to the store as are you know, some of our most popular items. Max and Louis is still open for curbside and favor delivery. We have a, on Max and Louis website, if you go to our menu, section you'll see the current menu it's pretty robust little stream down but it's pretty still you know there's still a lot of things for heb i've been posting on facebook you know uh, facebook lives and all kinds of other things right now we're in five stores we're planning on um hopefully by the end of the, the coming week uh to be in another five stores so to be in about 10 stores in um in, an, in about the next five days so this is one of our best-selling items. It's in all the HEBs we're selling. I mean, you know, probably two to one this, the meatballs and spaghetti, um, the French toast, which is uh, with our maple butter syrup. That we sell all day long. It's a, you know, it's a huge item. So um, one of our great employees, Sydney, along with some of our other people, they're making our trio salads. So it's chicken salad, egg salad, and tuna salad with um, fresh sliced cucumbers and tomatoes and onions and, and field greens. You know, it's interesting. You talk about the future. Right now, we are so hyper 
sensitive to what's going on by the minute. You know, people say we're taking this day by day. We're literally taking this minute by minute. I mean, we're figuring out, you've seen the labels, you've seen all this stuff. I mean, we're figuring out how to get this HEB thing done, our curbside and all that. Well, we have a 250 seat restaurant that we're hoping to get reopened soon. You know, as soon as they say, let's go, we can, you know, we want to be ready, you know, and we've transformed it into a, um, in, into a to-go packaging company. And now I got to re, you know, recreate it back into the, hey, and we want to come back fresh and we're going to change our menu a little bit and the design and just, you know, we want people to come back so excited and ready. And are people going to be ready to how close are they going to want to be even when they say it's okay. So we're going to be able to have all the seats that we had before. These are all things that are going through my mind and my friends who have other independent restaurants, we talk all the time what's going to be and when and how. And, you know, that's why I'm going to scratching and clawing to try and do everything I can to keep things going. Um, and then when I get home after 15 hours, I go on my computer and now I'm figuring out my menus and all that stuff, hoping that in three weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, whatever they, you know, whenever they say we can, we'll be ready to go right back at it. Do you want to be on Texas Eats? Well, here's your chance. Follow us on social media at KSAT Texas Eats on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and submit a 30-second video explaining why your recipe needs to be shared to all of Texas. Later in the show. People tend to be buying everything right now. There, there seems to be a unlimited budget for seafood. Coming up next on Texas Eats, Make sure you got a tasty beer. Check this out. This is San Antonio Lager from Ranger Creek from here in San Antonio, Texas. And we're going to make this bread. Let's do it. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Right now I'm gonna show you how to make a beer bread. It's very simple, it uses only a few ingredients, it takes an hour to bake. You're gonna make sure that your oven's at 375 degrees preset. Make sure you got a tasty beer. Check this out, this is San Antonio Lager from Ranger Creek from here in San Antonio, Texas. And we're gonna make this bread, let's do it. Now you can make this bread savory, you can make it sweet, you can play around with it, do whatever you wanna do. But the first thing you need to do is get your dry ingredients. First one is flour, you need three cups of flour, it needs to be sifted, so I went ahead Using a half cup measurement, put six of these little measurements in here, because that'd be three cups. Sifted it into this bowl. And now we're ready to add the other ingredients. Next ingredient you want to add to this mixture is baking powder. You're going to add three teaspoons of baking powder. Now this is what you need to use if you don't have self-rising flour. If you do, then don't worry about adding this. 
Next ingredient, you're gonna use one teaspoon of salt. This is regular old table salt. You can use whatever kind of salt you want. Next ingredient you wanna add is sugar. This one calls for a quarter cup of granulated white sugar. Go ahead and pour that right in. And then now at this point, you wanna mix all your dry ingredients together and then pour in 12 ounces of beer. This is a really tasty bread recipe. It's really easy. And the fun thing is if you have little ones that are engaged, they wanna do stuff to help you out in the kitchen, it's like a really safe activity for the kids to get involved with this one. The only thing is, you know, the oven, of course, but all of this stuff, it's, it's really straightforward. It's just adding the dry ingredients and then pouring in a beer. Maybe don't let the kids do the beer thing. If you don't have any beer at home, there are alternatives for this recipe that involve using soda, which is interesting. It's like an Irish soda bread. Uh, so you could try that recipe out. The beer one just, it's delicious and it works out great. All right, so you don't want to overmix anything. I still have some dry spots in the mixture, but you don't have to worry about it. And once you've got it, it smells like, it just smells like beer at this point, which it's supposed to, right? It's beer bread. And I'm gonna keep it kind of in a ball. Now, you want to get an actual loaf pan, and you don't want to grease it up before you put it in the oven. We don't have a loaf pan. We're in quarantine. You don't really want to leave the house, right? So I have these lids to different kinds of foil containers that we have, and I've transformed one into a, kind of like a makeshift loaf pan. And if you go on to ksat.com slash Texas Eats, I have the video on there on how I did it. It's nothing special, but if you want to see how I did it, uh, you can go on there and find that out as well, okay? Now you're gonna want to put your dough into the greased pan. It's blobby. Oh. <laughs> I have my butter right here, it's melted, and depending on the level of your microwave, it's 25 to 30 seconds to melt about a quarter cup of butter. And now your beer bread is ready to go in the oven. You wanna put the dough on the middle of the rack inside of your oven. It's going at 375 degrees for one hour, so you have enough time to go watch your favorite show, go binge watch something on Netflix, go outside and enjoy the weather. Do whatever you wanna do. Once your timer goes off, after an hour of the bread being in the oven, pull it out, let it rest for a little bit till it cools down on a nice cooling rack, just like right here. Then you're gonna to wanna to pick up your bread, move it to a cutting board, use a serrated knife. This is kinda of like a bread knife, right? If you have a specific bread knife, use that knife. And you're just gonna to wanna to cut right into it. And to get this recipe, head to our website, ksat.com slash Texas Eats. Very delicious. It's really easy, and like I said, it only takes an hour. And you got yourself some fresh bread. Do you want to be on Texas Eats? Well, here's your chance. Follow us on social media at KSAT Texas Eats on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and submit a 30 second video explaining why your recipe needs to be shared to all of Texas. Later in the show. Some people are wanting schooners, but we can't send out the glass, but we will <laughs> pour it in a to-go cup for you if need be. If you think you're gonna come out here and get a whole <laughs> beer. <laughs> Coming up next on Texas Eats. People tend to be buying everything right now. There, there seems to be a unlimited budget for seafood.
welcome back to Texas Eats. We're traveling around San Antonio and you're looking for some fresh seafood. Look no further than Groomer's Seafood. They've been in San Antonio serving the community since 1992 and now it's crawfish season. So you know they're packing some delicious food out here for you. Plus they have some other necessities that people are looking for right now. Let's go check it out. with me right here is Richard Groomer, the man, the myth, president, CEO of Groomer Seafood. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. And, you know, talk to me about what you guys are doing in here to adjust to the current changes happening right now. I know a lot of stuff is different, right. but how are you guys adapting to that? Well, we're right in the middle of Lent right now, which is kind of, this coronavirus has kind of caught us by surprise. Uh, we're having to change a lot of things. About two thirds of the business we uh, do right now is curbside or home delivery, which was totally unexpected two months ago, but here we are. And uh, it's really gone well. It's, uh, it's a learning curve that we've kind of had to, to practice with a little bit, but we figured it out, we're doing well with it. Technically, we've become a grocery store and hard to locate items. Since one of our largest customers with Cisco Foods, we already had an inroad to uh, uh, some of the, uh, uh, the wholesale products that they sell on a, on a large scale. So we start bringing a lot of products such as uh, produce and eggs, and milk and tortillas and just about everything else you can see and we're selling it all now. What have you found? Has there been a change since all this has happened that people are buying a certain product more than another? People tend to be buying everything right now. There, there seems to be an unlimited budget for seafood. I don't know how much of that has to do with Lent, but uh, the average sales are, are pretty high right now, and people are just buying about everything. Of course, live crawfish season is in full bloom and effect right now, and, and we're selling, I don't know, 1,000 sacks a week right now is what we're selling. So. Pinchers Up is a food truck. It comes from one of the farmers that we actually buy from in Louisiana. We used to actually go over there and pick up our crawfish directly, but with a lot of the uh, quarantine issues and, and travel issues that we have on the road right now, we actually had the farmers themselves bringing it to us on a nightly basis, the crawfish for daily sales here, and they've actually set up and they're actually selling their uh, their secret recipe out of, the, out of that truck right there. So It's a secret, y'all. You'll never know what it is. You just have to come try it when you come out here. That's right. Now, there's grilling goods that are inside. Mm -hmm. I saw some toilet paper, if that's something that you're still looking for fresh produce, of course, all the seafood in there, shrimp. I mean, you have tuna. Right. You got everything in there. We got everything. We sell about 200 different species when it comes to seafood. Uh, a lot of fresh shrimp, a lot of uh, oysters, crab meat, uh, swordfish, tilapia, tuna, uh, your redfish, Gulf Coast products, oysters from around the country. Uh, just about everything you can imagine when it comes to seafood. If it's available right now, you can buy it right here. And y'all just didn't pop up out of nowhere. You've been here for a long time. Uh, talk to me a little bit about your history and how at this moment in time is become a really difficult kind of hurdle for a lot of businesses and see you know including yours right well we're a fourth generation uh, seafood company my family's been in it for over 100 years out of south texas uh, my brother and i have actually my brothers and i have actually run it since about 1985 and so we're the 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 next generation handling all the product right now seafood's changed a lot over the years uh we're used to moving tonnage uh, that's kind of with all the restaurant closures around the country it's kind of backed off a little bit but we're looking to get past all this little hump in the road and get back to selling all the restaurants again. Well, good luck to you. Good Thank luck you. to Pinchers Up, of course, as well. Yes. Give me a foot action there. You there, go, there you go. <laughs> all right, y'all. Stay right. safe. Keep serving up great food. If you need seafood, this is a place to come. Curbside yeah. is an option. Go and follow them online. Follow them on social media to find out how to order as well. Thank you so much for your Thank time. Thank you. Man. Appreciate it. Do you want to be on Texas Eats? Well, here's your chance. Follow us on social media at KSAT Texas Eats on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and submit a 30 second video explaining why your recipe needs to be shared to all of Texas. Later in the show. You know, your know, relaxation and, you know, watch Netflix and, and hey, you know, and drink tip. So, so it definitely worked for it. Coming up next on Texas Eats. Some people are wanting schooners, but we can't send out the glass, but we will pour it in a to-go cup for you if need be. <laughs> if you think you're going to come out here and get a whole <laughs> beer. <laughs>
right now we're pulling into another San Antonio icon out here, this MK Davis, right off of North Flores Street and near downtown. We're gonna pull in, they're having to do curbside as well. And we're gonna be talking with Annette and they have some food that they wanted to show off to us as well. This is where you go. I mean, if you wanna bring the family, you have a good time. This is such a classic restaurant to do it at. Hi How's guys, it going? good, how are y'all doing? Welcome good. to MK Davis. How's it going? What, do you, what kind of food do you guys so got today? So today for you guys, we got your chicken oh. fried chicken with french fries. We got two of them for y'all. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for supporting the local businesses. We really appreciate you guys coming by today. Hey, we, we're trying to do what we can to, to help everybody out any way that we can do it. But I, we wanted to know, what is it like so far with the way the restrictions are set up, the way everything's happening? How has this affected your business? It's really affecting us. It's to the core too much. We've been here since 1956. My grandparents started it. We've had over 45 employees and we're down just to five right now just because of the way we can support them. We got to give them the opportunity to file unemployment or file, find part-time jobs that can give them some hours just to survive this. Hopefully only next month, maybe less. Yeah, that's tough. Very tough. I mean, because these people, I can assume, I mean, they're like family, right? Very much like family. I mean, some of these people have been with us for over 35 years. One started when I was nine months old. So they've been with us a long time. And then we have the younger generation coming in. A lot of them are seniors this year, so I feel horrible because they're missing out on graduation and prom and things like that. It's a, it's a lot to take in when you really think about what's happening. But I mean, how is this affecting your business having to switch now to a curbside delivery service? The numbers are definitely struggle. We're playing it day by day to see if it's worth staying open. Um, we lived on dining and the livelihood of the restaurant and people eating chicken fried steak and drinking their schooners and celebrating birthdays. And so they can't do that. They come, they pick up, they take some to go, but it's still not that same feel of enjoying it here at the establishment. And um, are you guys offering any beer to go as well? We're doing our homemade wine coolers, agave wine coolers, and we have bottled beer. Some people are wanting schooners, but we can't send out the glass, but we will <laughs> pour it in a to-go cup for you if need be. If you think you're going to come out here and get a whole <laughs> beer, <laughs> there's something wrong with you, but I get it, though. People are... People it's are, just the yeah, sentimental value yeah, of it. Yeah, they want to hold that big old thing of beer. But I did tell the customer, just think, it's going to be extra cold after 30 days in the ice cooler. So. There you go. Now, what kind of plans do you guys have moving forward? I know you say you're kind of playing it day by day, um, but if it comes to the point where you guys have to actually shut down, how is that going to affect the business? We don't know. We've never been in this predicament before in all the years, over the 60 years, so we're just good day by day. There That's all we got is day by day right now. Well, the food showed off one more time. You of gotta course. look at it. Check this out, y'all. You gotta make sure. Chicken fried chicken. You're getting all this delicious food. MK Davis is open. They got curbside. They're doing delivery. You can come in here. You can order your food. You can wait for it. They're practicing everything out here to make sure that everything is even extra sanitized. They got the gloves on. They're doing everything that they can to make sure they're providing you guys with a really good product. And Check this out. I mean, you got good food. This is where you want to come out to do it. Support local, dine local. We're going to keep traveling around and checking out other spots around San Antonio that are adapting to this new restriction here in town. But you guys, keep doing your thing. Good luck Thanks, to you. Thanks, guys. Again, I appreciate y'all stopping by. Do you want to be on Texas Eats? Well, here's your chance. Follow us on social media at KSAT Texas Eats on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and submit a 30-second video explaining why your recipe needs to be shared to all of Texas. Later in the show. We provide the ingredients to make three rolls. Um, we give you a set of instructions, but then pretty much is however you want to mix and match. Coming up next on Texas Eats. You know, your know, relaxation and, you know, watch Netflix and, and hey, you know, and, and drink tip. So, so it definitely worked for it.
back to Texas Eats. I'm here in Universal City, right off Pat Booker Road, to go inside of a drive through daiquiri spot that's making a splash on this side of town. Let's go inside, sip it, daiquiris to go. Daryl Smith is one of the co-owners at Sip It Daiquiris To Go, a concept that started inside of his popular chicken restaurant, Wing It. Piggybacking off of our, uh, our other concept, Wing It, um, we definitely thought, you know, why not expand what we were already doing? Um, we had like two machines in each location, and they did fairly well. Um, so we was like, why not just do a concept strictly on that, you know? Um, so we kind of put our heads together and, and came up with Sip It. Um, we found this spot, which was like, a perfect, you know, spot on Pat Booker to like exactly, you know, to do the concept that we, we envisioned um, as far as like the drive through and man, it's, it's just been overwhelming. It's been, it's been great. The concept has taken off since the COVID-19 lockdown with people staying in line as long as 45 to 60 minutes to get their drive through daiquiris to go. A lot of them is like, like I said, getting out the house. Um, a lot, we notice a lot of people don't mind the wait because um, I mean, it's, it's really, you know, you're stuck at home. You know, it's, it's really been like a lot of, like a, a, I don't, I don't want to say depressant. I don't know if that's the right word to use, but like a lot of people, like I said, alcohol is, is something that, you know, you just can put your, you know, your relaxation and, you know, watch Netflix and, and hey, you know, and drink it. So, so it definitely worked for it. The drinks come in a variety of flavors and combinations, including virgin drinks for children or for anybody who just wants a tasty drink and doesn't want alcohol, plus three different size options, small, regular, and a half gallon. Talk to me about the kind of alcohol that y'all are using out here. Okay, so basically it's, it's derived from oranges. It's a citrus Venice uh, neutral liquor. Okay. Gives you the bang for the buck, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Now, when are y'all open? When are your busiest times? When do you think is a good time for people who haven't tried you to come out? Um, I always say the earlier the better. Like with these with these times, like the lines are getting like like crazy. So I say we open at 12, 12 to three, we do a happy hour. Those are the times you want to get in here to, to beat the lines. Um, anything after that, you're gonna get you're gonna you're gonna wait. I mean, the, the line it usually take about two minutes to make a drink. So they they go. It's not that they're going slow. It's that you know you have 30 cars times two minutes. You know this gonna get the 45 to 30 minutes when you got 30 cars backed up. So yeah. So that that's kind of you know be realistic. So when you come to the drive-through, mm -hmm. the kids can get something too. They can as well. Yeah. That's great. So this yeah, is something yeah. for the whole family. Yeah, yeah. Now, but the only thing about the, the the virgin is that it might take a little longer because we're making those from they're not in these big uh, <laughs> machines. So we're actually. So those are the people holding up the line, right? Possibly, <laughs> yeah. possibly, possibly, possibly. Well, Daryl, good luck to you, man. I'm I'm super yeah. proud of you. This is awesome. This is a great concept. Uh, you guys are killing it, and I know that people are really appreciating your product because they are lining up like crazy. You see it all over social media. Yeah. Good luck to you. Keep it going, and I look forward to your other locations coming up. Right. Remember, don't drink and drive San Antonio and drink responsibly and enjoy Thirsty Thursday the smart way over here at Sip It. Do you want to be on Texas Eats? Well, here's your chance. Follow us on social media at KSAT Texas Eats on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and submit a 30 second video explaining why your recipe needs to be shared to all of Texas. Later in the show, I always tend to put my air vents on the opposite side of where the fire is. Coming up next on Texas Eats. We provide the ingredients to make three rolls. Um, we give you a set of instructions, but then pretty much is however you want to mix and match.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. We're here off Wurzbach Parkway at Yellowfish Sushi, where they're creating DIY sushi kits that you can take home with you. And with me right here is co-owner Brenda. Thank you so much for having us out here today. Thank you. Now talk to us about the DIY sushi kits. I mean, that's so cool. What a fun idea. You can bring it home. You can engage with the whole family. Is it customizable? We do our uh, do-it-yourself sushi kits uh, for Valentine's Day. We've done it for the past couple of years uh, because we know Valentine's Day is super heavy night and sometimes people don't want to go out. So we want to give couples an option to stay home and do something nice. And when all of this started, we realized like, hey, we have everything. Let's give it a shot. Everybody's at home. They're trying new things. Um, let's uh, give them an opportunity to try and make sushi at home. Can you mix and match what you get in the kit? So we uh, we provide the ingredients to make three rolls. Um, we give you a set of instructions, but then pretty much is however you want to mix and match. Very so cool. we give uh, fresh salmon, fresh tuna, some kanikama crab, and then some of our signature sauces that we make here in house. And then you just mix it however you want. Did you make sushi before owning the business or is this something you guys just kind of stumbled upon? And just yeah, <laughs> no, no. Like my sushi would probably would come out triangle, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of fun, and and the guys that, that we have here, they're they've been doing sushi for sometimes some from their teenage years, and they're artists, they're fantastic, and um, we have wonderful customers. So they've always they've always wondered um, like, hey, can we can we make a roll? And then a couple of years ago, that's when we were like, oh, let's give it a try, and this is a perfect opportunity to have customers trying at home. Yeah, what a great time to roll it out because everybody's trying to eat at home now, right? They're not trying to go out. It was very emotional. I got to tell you, um, I was working in this location on the night that our mayor said that, you know, restaurants had to close their dining. So as um, I was talking to my brother and as we were turning off the lights, it was a very bittersweet moment because we didn't know. We still don't know when it's going to be the next time that we'll see our dining room on. Um, However, um, it's been a lot of adjustment, but since the day that we opened, day one, we've always, or we've always offered online delivery and pickup. We have an app. Uh, we were one of the first establishments here in town with our own app. So our customers are very much used to placing orders with us online. Um, for us to do and pack everything uh, to go, it's not a unusual thing for us to do. We've been doing this like that for the past seven years. So for us, that that was not that much of a shift. Um, definitely the hardest shift would be not having to our customers here every night or every day, um, talking to them, hugging them because they become friends. Right. After all these years, they become friends. So that, that has been, uh, we've tried to keep as most of our employees as we can right now. We are uh, doing double or triple duty because now we're doing delivery drivers. Uh, we've extended our area. Uh, but we're still here and we'll be here until we can reopen and have our customers back. Well, Brenda, thank you so much for having us out here and good luck to you guys. Thank you. I know it's a lot of work, especially now having to do different things, but you already had it in place, the drive-through and the, the pickup. You already kind of had all these balls rolling. So good on you for having that. But you guys can check out Yellowfish Sushi right here off Warsbach. You have another location as well by the rim, but you guys can come out here, get your DIY sushi kits, make some sushi at home and try your hand at doing an ancient Japanese craft. Let's see if you can do it. <laughs> do you want to be on Texas Eats? Well, here's your chance. Follow us on social media at KSAT Texas Eats on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and submit a 30-second video explaining why your recipe needs to be shared to all of Texas. Coming up next on Texas Eats. I always tend to put my air vents on the opposite side of where the fire is.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. We're here inside of my office at my home, and we're gonna do a Zoom interview with barbecue pit master, Vincent Cervantes. And he's gonna be showing us how you can smoke any kind of meat that you wanna do at home using just a regular Weber kettle grill. Vincent, how's it going, man? Hey, Dave, how you doing? Thank you for having me, my friend. Yeah, hey, you know what, we're excited. You're doing these videos online right now about how you can smoke meat at home, how you can do different things to, you know, even transform a regular grill into something that you can smoke with. And you're using something right there in front of you. Now talk to me about the kind of wood that you're using to smoke with. Usually on my bigger pits, I use a 100% mesquite or oak. Um, of course, my business was Mesquite Shack. So when I was on my truck, I had 100% mesquite. Sometimes I'll mix. But since I'm trying to do these videos for the everyday backyard pit master, uh, as we got here, not everybody could afford the big old pits. So on my smaller grills in the smaller space, I will um, mix some charcoal. I got some Kingsford that I lay out and um, I will incorporate some wood chunks with it. So uh, I use mesquite 100%, you know, uh, it, it, and that's my preference. You could use whatever you want, but these wood chunks are great uh, to incorporate and you have in front of you, like you said, it's like a standard grill that like the everyday guy would have in their backyard, but you've transformed this, you've done something to make it a little bit special, right? To make it more of a smoking pit. That's the beauty of these things. I mean, you know, it, you don't necessarily have, have to have a Weber. This is great. I've had this one for over 10 years. It still looks great. It still works great. You could cook steaks or smoke on it. Um, the way I did this, basically, and, and, and as you can tell, my temperature is sitting right at where I want it, about 225 degrees. Um, so basically, the way I do it, this is called the snake method. Anytime you have like a really small area, and this method works basically for, you know, if you have a, a, a water smoker, a, a vertical like bullet smoker, Weber Smoky Mountain, uh, Weber Kettle, this is called the snake method. And what I've done here was I'll compact and, and, and tightly put my charcoal um, right around the opposite edge of where I'm going to cook. And then I'll lay the wood, wood chunks or chips or any type of wood on top of that. Basically, what this allows it to do is to basically slowly cook and burn down. And basically, you're, you're, you having to check the fire is... Um, it can basically almost go the whole cook without having to add fuel to it this way. And this will actually keep the temperature at bay because you're at such a confined space. I also add a water pan within it to add moisture to it. And um, what I'll also do is put another water pan closer to the fire and that will also help regulate temperature as well since it's a so so tight of a space um this grill is actually let me expand on that a 27 about a 26 75 inch grill i know not everybody could get this size you could cook on an 18 inch a 22 inch if it's smaller i mean you may not be able to fit the biggest briskets but you could still set up your fire like this and it will still work so let me add that fire pan real quick to it the other water pan <clears throat> and this is basically how i would do it so I got a lot of extra moisture out here right here, and I'm gonna put my brisket right here and let it cook. So when I put my lid back on, I always tend to put my air vents on the opposite side of where the fire is. If somebody wants to cook a brisket for Easter, they wanna have it ready, even just for any celebration, um, what is the average you know, cook time per pound? I would say about an hour. If you're staying about 225 degrees, um, me personally, I cook low and slow. There are pit masters out there that cook high and fast. Barbecue is what you make of it. It, it what's works best for you. Um, thank you so much for giving us your time today. We really appreciate it. And you guys, of course, to get more information on how, you know, you can cook and do things just like Vincent Cervantes, you got to follow him on social media. Look for Mesquite Shack on Facebook. That's where I've seen your videos on there. So check him out. Follow him on there. you got really cool, interesting videos. A lot of them taking off on social media. So good on you. Keep it up, man. And it looks like you're having fun at the lake. I'm jealous. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a no better place to do social distancing. Hey, I want to add thank you to all the healthcare workers, everybody on the front lines, helping everybody to get through this. We'll all get through it together. Thank y'all.
Do you want to be on Texas Eats? Well, here's your chance. Follow us on social media at KSAT Texas Eats on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and submit a 30-second video explaining why your recipe needs to be shared to all of Texas. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Texas Eats. As we move forward with the show, we're gonna be doing things a little bit different. Zoom interviews, satellite interviews with chefs inside their home, maybe some KSAT personalities as well, so that they can share recipes with you, things that you can cook inside your house. And you can follow us on social media at KSAT Texas Eats on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to join us every Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning right here on KSAT 12, because this is how Texas Eats.